go first? Sure. Yeah, I think that's smart. I, I was reading, I was speaking with uh, a couple people this afternoon, and we were talking about Jesus. And when I was praying to what, what God wanted me to do tonight, he brought this back up, and I want to take a look at it. If you will go with me real quickly to Philippians 3. Philippians 3.10. It says that I may know him, Jesus, that I may know Jesus Amen. and the power of his resurrection. Amen. Now, to get to know him and the power of his resurrection, look at the next part, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Amen. Ouch. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Hallelujah. Being made conformable unto his death. death. Well, how are we going to do that unless we learn about how he did that? If Amen. you will turn with me, to Isaiah 50. We are going to look at Jesus. When I was growing up, they had a song that I heard sung. I never, I never really looked at the lyrics, but it, it talked about Jesus was thinking about me when he was on the cross. Not a word in the Bible says that. <laughs> Nowhere in the scriptures. But it does say what he was thinking about and what he was considering and who he was looking at. It does say that in the word. And we're going to take a look at it. If you go to Isaiah 50, I'm going to begin in verse 4. This is Jesus speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I may learn how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. This is Jesus, and he's talking about the Father. Verse 5, The Lord God has opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. We know that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talks about Jesus before the council, and that's what they did. He said, I hid not my face from shame and spitting. I didn't hide my face. I didn't try to run away. And look at this next verse. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face as flint. You know, I was kind of taught growing up that Jesus was a wimpy man. And that poor creature went to the cross. That was not Jesus. Amen. That was not Jesus at all. In the scriptures, he was a man, yes, like us, but he was far from wimpy. He said, verse 7, for the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Amen. Let him come near unto me. Does that sound like a wimpy man? Amen. Jesus looked, set his face as flint to go to the cross. Now go with me to Psalm 16. We are going to see some of the things that Jesus thought and what he was doing while he was going to the cross, on the cross, and while he was in hell and being raised from the dead. Look at uh, Psalm 16. You know, we've all been instructed to read the Psalms out loud, that they are prayers. Now consider this. Jesus, growing up, read the Psalms. He was a man, and he read the Psalms. And you know what? It says, we'll see it here. He knew who these psalms were talking about. Amen. They were talking about him. Have you ever considered that Jesus read exactly what was going to happen to him? Amen. He knew what was coming. He read it in the psalms. All right, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who is, has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. You know, we just read that in Isaiah. His ear being open morning by morning. Verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. This is Jesus speaking. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. He said, therefore, my heart is glad. In my glory, my tongue rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And look who he's talking to in next verse. For thou, thou, he's talking to the Father. He is talking to the Father here. He says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to seek corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. You're going to show me how to get out of here. Amen. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Turn with me to Psalm 22. 
Amen. Thank God. This is Jesus while he was on the cross. We're going to find out exactly what he was thinking, what was going on in his heart, and who he was talking to. Psalm 22, first verse, shows us who this is. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We know that Jesus spoke this in Matthew. He said, why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, I'm on the cross. Who's he talking to here? You know, I used to be a, a reading teacher. Now, class, who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? He's talking to his father. He is on the cross and he's talking to the father. Amen. He is talking to his father. You will notice the communication here. He said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. Amen. And in the night season, and back. am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted thou to deliver them. He said, and let's go down to verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. This is Jesus on the cross, and he's talking to the Amen. Father. Amen. If you read and continue on in this, in this psalm, you will find that Jesus is constantly talking to his Father. He is constantly Amen. in communication. He is keeping his eyes on the Father. He's keeping his heart on the Father. And like it says in Isaiah, he set his face like flint. Look at verse 14. <laughs> I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a putzer. My tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Thou, Father, thou hast brought me into the dust of death. You're the one bringing me down to death. Father, you're the one bringing me down. And he said, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly, the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. Isaiah 52, every bones out of joint. Amen. Now, turn with me to Psalm 88. We'll finish there. Amen. I'm going to go down to verse 14. And it's this is Jesus in hell. In hell. And he is suffering the wrath of God. If you look earlier in this psalm, it says, Thou has put me in the, whole, in the lowest pit. Jesus is constantly talking to the Father. Amen. Even when the Father turns his back on him, Jesus doesn't stop talking. He doesn't stop crying out to the Father. He is in hell. He is a man like you and I. He has feelings like you and I. He is suffering the lowest hell, but he doesn't stop talking. He is constantly in communication with the Father. He's Amen. constantly talking to him. He said, Lord, why hast thou cast off my soul? Verse 14. Amen. Why hast thou cast off my soul? Why hidest thy face from me? And look at this next verse. I am afflicted and ready to die my from my youth up. Do you know that Jesus knew he was going to the cross when he was young? He knew he was going to the cross. Why? He could read. He knew who he was and he could read. The Father ministered it to him. The Holy Ghost ministered it to him just like the Holy Ghost ministers to us. And he said, thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy tears have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. He's in hell. He's talking to the Father. Amen. He's praising, worshiping the Father, talking to the Father. He never stopped talking to his Father because he knew, like in Psalm 16, he said, you will get me out of here. Amen. I know you're coming to get me. Amen. In fact, I got to do one more. Psalm 18. This is Jesus coming out of hell. Verse 15. It says, The channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. O Lord. He's talking to the Father again. He said, At the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Jesus could not get out of hell on his own. The Amen. Father had to come and get him, and the Father did 
when Jesus satisfied the Father concerning us and the Father went and got him. Jesus never stopped talking to his Father. And you know what? He's our example. He is our example. There is no tribulation, no affliction that's worse than what Jesus went through. And Jesus constantly talked to the Father. Do you see where I am, Father? Do you see what's going on? You're the one that put me here. You're the one that's going to get me out. You know what? We can pray the same way. We can absolutely pray the same way. Do you see where I am, Father? Do you see where you have your daughter? Do you see what you've got her into? Do you know you're going to get her out? And how do I know he's going to get me out? Because of the blood that Jesus shed for me. Because I can go boldly into the throne of God by the blood of Jesus. And I can talk. And I can keep talking till I get out. And it's the same way with you.